This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi friends, it's important to differentiate the two variants of small pupil. They have got great clinical significance and surgical implications. Let us look at some of the clues which can help us to distinguish them. The two variants are the rigid pupil and the elastic pupil. Now these two pupils are rigid pupils. They arise with pseudo exfoliation and we can see the total lack of a pupillary rough and the lisping tetrophy. On the other hand, this is an elastic variant of the small pupil, most likely a potential case of IFIS. The patient is on tamsulosin. The pupillary rough is intact and there is no sphincter atrophy seen. These can dilate a little bit with viscomedriasis. These two variants must be differentiated for one simple reason. It helps us to decide whether we can perform stretch pupilloplasty in that particular case. Stretch pupilloplasty is often used to improve intraoperative midriasis whether with or without a pupil expansion device. Now when we plan to use a pupil based ring device like the BHEX ring, we sometimes pre-stretch the pupil before using this device so that we get better pupil expansion and also it is relatively easy to engage the device. Pre-stretching is beneficial for the rigid pupils especially in eyes with pseudo exfoliation. On the contrary, pre-stretching the pupil can be counterproductive in eyes with elastic pupils especially in eyes which are vulnerable for IFIS because stretching is going to worsen the floppiness of the iris. Hence, we are better off using the BHEX device directly without pre-stretching the pupil. Now, this is an 80-year-old man with pseudo exfoliation and rigid pupil. I am using Y-hooks to stretch the pupil. I am intentionally not stretching it very wide. I don't want the sphincter to tear. A controlled stretching is good enough in most cases. The stretching is done in diagonally opposite directions. And once it is done, now is the time to place the BX ring. Now OVD is placed under the iris and then the three pairs of notches are engaged onto the pupillary margin. The first notch has not engaged well enough. It is repositioned before engaging the final pair of the notches onto the iris. Moving on to the next case of the rigid pupil. This is an elderly man with pseudo exfoliation. Now we can clearly see the areas of sphincter atrophy. In this eye, I am performing stretch pupilloplasty and I am consciously stretching the pupil quite widely and few sphincter tears are induced. I am doing this excessive stretching since I was not sure about the ability of this pupil to dilate. But in most cases, this excessive stretching is not required and I wouldn't do it. So the OVD is placed under the iris, the BX ring is placed over the surface of the iris and I am using the 23G BX micro forceps through the opposite side port to engage the first pair of notches onto the pupillary margin. The next pair of notches are then engaged. The hands are switched and the last pair of notches are successfully engaged onto the pupillary margin. And now we have a decent sized pupil. Moving on to the last case. Uh, this is the case with the elastic pupil. The patient is on tamsulosin for the last 4 years. No stretching is done and the standard procedure of placing the BX ring is being carried out. I am stabilizing the globe with my second instrument so that the visualization remains great and this is extremely helpful especially when you are doing it in a topical anesthesia because sometimes the globe can turn around. The first two pair of the notches are engaged using the forceps through my right side port. The hands are switched and the final pair of notches are fixed in position. I prefer to remove the ring after intraocular lens implantation and before the OVD removal. Now removing this device is extremely simple. Just disengage the device from the pupillary margin and pull it out. Now these are the post-op pictures. The BX device is quite gentle on the pupillary sphincter. The pupillary margin usually is not damaged in majority of the cases if the stretching has been done in a very controlled fashion. However, excessive stretching itself 
will tear the sphincter as in some cases hence the amount of stretching we need we do has to be judicious and need based in case of a very rigid pupil we may prefer to stretch uh, the pupil a little bit more to achieve this micro sphincterotomies which will definitely help in better pupil expansion but in most cases it is not necessary of course stretching is not to be done in case of an elastic small pupil thank you